Welcome to Retrobot, the YouTube channel where we feed a friendly space robot a diet of pure nostalgia. I'm Clay, and today we're going to be taking a look at Hasbro Gen Transformers Generation Selects. I, I can't keep track of all of their extra hoo-ha stuff that they have available online. Uh, Transformers Generation Selects Piranha Con C Cons. They're C Cons. That's what they are. So here we go. We've got a couple of these, and I'm really excited for these. Uh, to be honest, I didn't think I was going to be able to get them. Uh, we pre-ordered these last year, and then the pre-orders would just disappear. They're, they're, it would just be like, nope, nope, that's that's not coming out anymore. That's not a thing. And so then when we had the ability to buy King Neptune, it's like, yes, yes, you know what? I will I will take the Japanese recolor version of these toys because otherwise I'm not going to get the toys. And to be honest, I'm not really attached to the Japanese version. I, I didn't I didn't even know about it when I was a kid. And uh, and then as as an adult, it's like okay, I'm finding out. It, it it seems cool, but I prefer the one that I remember, which is the Seacons. And then, holy crap, we're actually able to pre-order the Seacons now, and they are being released. Well, I just got two, and then there's going to be more released throughout this year, hopefully. Uh, you know, fingers crossed. So that's what we have here. We have the Transformers Generation Selects Seacons. And so uh, I'm going to do a little bit of an unboxing. I have had these out of the box, but I like showing the packaging because I, I feel like that's part of the experience. Now, the outside box is pretty plain. It just says Transformers Selects all over it. And, uh, and then, you know, it still says it on the bottom and it has, you know, it has the, the UPC and, and a little bit of stuff. But other than that, you know, it just says Transformer Selects all over it. You, you have no way of knowing what's in this box from looking at this box. Uh, well, I guess it does say GSO6. So, I mean, that's obvious, right? Oh, GSO6. Oh, I, that's, uh. I guess that's Generation Selects 06. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know why it says TT. I, maybe that's Pi. Maybe that's Pi GS 06. Maybe there's a Pi in here. That would be awesome. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and open this up and pull out, huh, maybe. There we go, there we go. Okay, so we'll slide that, okay. And here we have Transformers Generation Selects, trying not to get that hot spot on the packaging from the light. Seacon's Lobclo. Uh, um, is, that says Lobclo, right? And I, I, I feel like I, I want to, I want to like backspace <laughs> and, Lob Clo? I first of all, that's not a later. And and I realize that he's like a lobster creature and he has claws. So I, I guess if they couldn't get secure the rights to Nautilator because, of course, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Nautilator, maybe it was like, nope, nope, you can't have that. Uh, I'm, But, you know, they already put the word Seacons in front of it. So... So, um, Seacon's not a later, I would think would, would pass. They've done that with other stuff, but they went the extra mile of saying lob, uh, lob, clo. Does it clo in the dark? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, it's, it, it, it's not a later. Okay, it, it's gonna be not a later. Let's just let's just accept that this this is not a later. Um, so at this point we have the inner the inner box which has this sleeve on it, and uh, 
and you know there's there's a bunch of uh japanese on the back and uh and then you know more i guess this is the japanese equivalent of legal mumbo jumbo so this is a sleeve uh so it should just slide out of here uh hopefully let's let's do it ah uh, there we go there we go and, and I really like this packaging. You know, I like the stark black and white. I love the line art. Uh, it's it's kind of retro, but at the same time, modern. And, and I really like what they've done here. Um, so so that's cool. And I want to preserve the packaging for these because, uh, because these are pretty cool. But uh, I am going to set this aside for now. And then we will get to the box inside. And there... Yeah, well, I'm spending this whole video just rotating boxes, and uh, and you know there's not a whole lot there, but we open this up, and now we finally are going to get to the inside. And what is this? Okay, can somebody explain to me why when I'm opening this up, the the logo is upside down? Does that make sense to anybody? It, I mean, are they like, are they hoping that they can may, maybe the idea is that they want to be able to display it like this? Huh. Well, that that used to be uh, tied in with plastic. I, I can see it. I can see it. So, uh, yeah, let me get that. So, uh, yeah, he does come with this axe and some other pieces. So uh, that is Lobclo. And, uh, and he's already really, really cool looking. Uh, and there goes another one. So, of course, these things were held in with plastic ties when they were shipped, and I have had them out of the box. So we can take out, uh, this is, this is sort of the prime armor, except that this is, uh, this is distinctive to the Seacons. This is not the normal prime armor. And one of the things that they've done is they've got this, this thumb piece that can go on either side. But the thing is, it has to go on some side. There is no way to just hide it inside or split it so that it becomes symmetrical. So it really doesn't work very well as an armor piece. It's, in, in most cases, it just looks like a hand. And, and that's fine because it's a very nice hand as, uh, as combiner hands go, but uh, as being some kind of other accessory for the figure, uh, it, it looks a lot like a hand. It, it, it's a hand. That, that's what it is. It, it's a hand. And, uh, and so I, uh, I, I appreciate, you know, we've got individual fingers. We've got a nicely formed thumb. Uh, I, I, I like what they've done here with the jointing, but it's definitely a hand. And, uh, and as hands go, it's a, it's a pretty decent one. You know, this is one where maybe we don't have to get the upgrade kit because he already has posable fingers. So, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's the hand. It's not really prime armor. I, I think that this little piece can come out because that's part of the prime armor gimmick but uh so you could in theory put a uh, a titan master or a uh, or a, a, an enigma or a headmaster into that but uh but you're not gonna most likely you're just gonna keep it like that and it's gonna look great so we've got that uh we've got uh we've got some weapons and as you saw when i uh did my live stream about the seacons and about god neptune uh these weapons do combine in the uh in the combined mode to make a big trident thing but i don't have enough of the weapons to do that yet so we'll set that aside and let's pull out lob claw Oh gosh, you know, I hate that name. Lobclo. It's Lobclo. I, I keep forgetting. It's not even Lobclaw. It's Lobclo. I don't even like the name Lobclaw, but the fact that it's misspelled as Lobclo is even worse. So let's just take this box out of the way. 
and will look at not a later. And, and that's really what it is. It is not a later. He is based in part off of the geometry from Blot. He is kind of a heavy retool of Blot from the Terracons. Uh, you can see that these are Blot's claws. And, uh, and actually, if, uh, if we had him transformed into his robot mode, we would be able to wrap the feet around and press them against the back. At least mostly, uh, the head kind of gets in the way. But, uh, but it, so it still has pretty much the same legs and, uh, and body and claws of Blot, but then they've given it a, uh, a lobster head here, which is able to open its mouth, and it's red on the inside, which is really nice, and they even painted the teeth. So, so you know, there's a lot of really good detail that I really like on this already. And it does have a five millimeter compatible hole here so that if you wanted to stick in a, uh, you know, the gun, you can do that. And he can have a gun mounted to the underside of his head, which kind of works. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I wouldn't be comfortable personally having a gun mounted to the underside of my chin but I'm also not made of metal. So uh, now you'll notice that, uh, that this, so they've got, they've got this piece and they've got this little indentation here. And hypothetically speaking, that is supposed to go in there and that's supposed to kind of tab it in, but it's not very deep. And so it pops out when you're holding him. Now, if he is on a flat surface and you know, he's just sitting there, it works just fine. But, uh, but in terms of being able to pick him up and do stuff, those things are going to come out and swing sideways all the time. It's not a big problem, but you can see how easily they, they pop out. This is something that I noticed uh, pretty, pretty early on, and uh, I don't know that there's anything that I can do about it. I could try tightening up these joints if I wanted to, but I'm not sure that I want to. Uh, it, it, it doesn't make a big deal, but, but it is noteworthy. The other thing is that his lobster tail is just a removable peg. They did not modify the geometry here in the feet in any way to turn it into a lobster tail. They just made this lobster tail, which has the ability to turn into a gun like that. So, you know, and at least they have a, a motion in there to turn it into a gun. It's not just that, uh, that you pull it off and then they call it. It's like, oh, okay, now it's an ax. Look, he can swing it like this and hit things. It's, it's a weapon. Uh, and that being said, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of when they just take a part of the alt mode and you have to remove it and say, okay, it's a weapon now, as a way of getting around dealing with the geometry. That being said, if, if this guy doesn't have his lobster tail, he still looks like a lobster. It, it, he just, he's already pretty lobster looking. Um, yeah, the tail helps. The tail definitely helps, but even without the tail, it's like, okay, yeah, he's, he's, he still is what he is. Uh, he, he's just missing uh, the fin. He's missing a couple fins. Uh, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to forgive it uh, because it's not a hugely critical part. He's still a really cool looking toy. I especially love the colors. These colors are great. Uh, the, the, uh, there is no God Neptune version of this character. And so uh, this is one where since there were six original Seacons because they were featuring that, uh, that target master gimmick, then uh, I guess God Neptune only gets five. Uh, I guess he wasn't really uh, part of the whole target master thing. I don't know if there was an original 
I don't think so. So, uh, so yeah, they did not include this mold with the God Neptune set that I got. So I was really, really excited to get this one because honestly, this is one of my favorite Seacons. Like of all of them, this is the guy that that stands out in my mind as as one of the coolest. He has yeah, you know, he has the claws and he has and he's got you know eight legs and, and he's just really really cool. So so I was really disappointed when I thought I was never going to get him. Now let's go ahead. We'll uh, we'll set that right there. And uh, I'm going to pull out the Gen 1 version. So this is the Gen 1 Nautilator. And uh, he is similar, but, uh, but only just. You know, first of all, he's more of an aquamarine color than he is. You know, this is, uh, this is more cyan and teal. Uh, and it's okay because he works in cyan and teal. Um... I don't think that they're yeah, you know, I don't think that it hurts him to be more bluish than greenish. The uh obviously he's got more gray on him and uh and that's fine. So they've they've changed the color a lot and they've changed the details a lot. He is a little bit more swoopy. Uh he's got he's got a very stubby uh, back end, you know, he he looks more like one of those little jumpy spiders than he does like a lobster, and his tail end is more of a suggestion than it is a proper tail. So, so you know, once again, you have this form where he is much much more lobster like, but you, you even if you take that off, he's still more lobster shaped than his Gen One counterpart. So, uh, that being said, uh, I like this guy. Uh, he's cute. He's cool. Uh, but, uh, but I'm really, really, really happy to get this. Let's go ahead and turn him into a robot because, you know, that's, that's what we do. So we can take the, uh, the legs and we can pull these out and then you open these. And this is a very familiar transformation sequence for a lot of the Combiner war style combiners. So we can close the legs around the little tab there. You make sure that it tabs into this little, this little hole in the back of the leg half and that secures the knee joints. And then we can take these and just poke them down and there's actually a little there's a little hole right there and a little nub right there so that can plug in and that holds itself much more nicely uh, that is far more secure than it is plugging into his chest I suspect I'm gonna have to go back and look at blot to see if he has exactly this same chest I suspect that I will find that he does and they did not want to remold this part because I feel like if they did remold this part, they would have put in deeper notches for these things to engage with, but they were just taking advantage of the geometry that was already there and saying, you know, good enough. And for the most part, it is good enough. It doesn't function well, but it does sort of function. So you notch those in, you split, you spread the legs, and then, uh, and then you rotate the waist and then you can bring the arms down and i've even in blot i thought that this was just brilliant i love this little transformation here you've got this pincher that that closes right that's cool if you close it more it goes through and gives you the fist that's really cool you see how that just kind of goes into that little slot there and the claw really does transform into a hand. That's cool. I love that. That is very clever. And, uh, and I'm very happy to see it get used again because it, it's really effective and, and it's very cool. It, it makes for a functional claw or claw in this case. It makes a, for a very functional claw and, uh, and a great transformation for a fist. And then he's still got these gauntlet things around the back of his hands. So, you know, even while he's got a robot fist and a well-sculpted robot fist, he can still be like, yeah. 
So we're going to pull the head back and then we can just notch it in. And you can see the little, the little holes right here and then the rectangular notches right there. So we'll do that and then we spin the head around and boom, there he is in all of his lob claw glory and we'll give him his patented lob claw axe which goes in right there and and we'll put this lob claw gun uh, on the back of the head there although actually what we could do so you could either give him this as a weapon or what i like to do is I just like to plug it in since there's two posts here I can plug it right into the back of the head and look at how nice that looks you know that just it, it looks like it belongs uh, let me there give it a little twist so you know you've got this really nice organic mechanical techno organic fish shape on his back, it sort of reminds me of the way that the aerial bots, when the jet cone, you know, the nose of the jet would come back and then the tail of the jet would come forward, it would make what looks like a jet pack on their backs. And, and so that, that I, I, I kind of like that. I, I, uh, I, I think that's cool. You don't have to do it that way, but that's what I do it. Now, when I do that, it does kind of pop these out. You could see how it was fighting me a little bit, and that's because it, uh, in, in order for it to fit, uh, I had to dislocate the head from those pegs a little bit, which is not a big deal, but, uh, but I did it. And then you can give him his, his lob claw blaster and, uh, and, and there we go. It's lob claw. It's, it, it's not lob claw. It's not a later. Everybody say it with me. Not a later. Yeah, not lob clo. This guy can be lob clo. <laughs> no, you know what? They're both not a later. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, that is that is not a later, aka lob clo. And uh, and when we get the rest of these guys, hopefully we get the rest of these guys. Then we'll do. We'll do a much longer video or live stream about about the Seacons and, you know, Piranacon together. So I'm going to set those aside. Let's look at that other box. It's going to be a good box. I'm telling you already, it's going to be a good box. So in this one, and I'm not going to bother showing you all the views of this one because... E You've, you've, how many times do you need to see a black box that says Transformers Generation Selects on the side? It says Gen Transformers Generation Selects. So, and then we've got this one, and we'll set the box aside. And this is, once again, they've changed the name. This is Seacon's Kraken. Um, and uh, this is Sea Wing. It's Sea Wing. You know, it's not Kraken. It's Sea Wing. Uh, I guess for legal reasons, it's Kraken. And let's go ahead and open this up. And once again, we have the Autobot sign, uh, the Generation Selects logo upside down for reasons. And then we get another piece of the Trident, which becomes kind of a bat lift. Uh, you know, it's sort of like that thing that Commander Worf always used in Star Trek Next Generation. Let's, uh, let's pull this stuff out. I'm trying to pull this stuff out. You know, when I want to pull it out, it doesn't want to come out. But when I try to, when I try to pull it out, it, I don't know. <laughs> so let's, oh, there we go. Everything's coming out. So we've got... You know, this piece, which is part of the trident and also becomes a gun. And then this, which is another gun. And we'll, we'll attach that in just a second. And then there's another one of those. And, you know, we're going to let gravity do the work here. 
So, so we got that one. And then of course we've got C wing here. And then we've got this thing that doesn't want to come out. So I'm going to have to pop the tray out and push from behind. There we go. Now we got it. And now we will take this out of the way. And we will look at Kraken, a.k.a. Sea Wing. And uh, once again, we get a, uh, an identical piece of prime armor, which, uh, which really, it's a fist. We, we've talked about that. It's a fist. We also have all of these pieces. There's lots of pieces here. And, uh, and these things work really nicely under the wings. So, you know, you can put them right there and make them into extra, extra guns right there. And here's one of the things that I've been doing with these is let's see i've been pegging these into the hole here and then having the fingers kind of wrap around the front and either doing that or turning them around and wrapping around the back. And then since I have two of them now, there we go. You know, it's, it, it's like extra propulsion or something. So, you know, that's something that can be done. And if you have two of them on one figure on either side, they're symmetrical. They, they look a little bit more like something other than just, just fists. But, uh, but either way, yeah, you don't have to use them. Um, but, but there are options because they are, they are nice pieces. It's just hard to get them to, to be something that's not a hand. And that, that's really the only criticism. It's a very light criticism because I feel like having nice combiner hands is, is almost worth it, um, you know, even if you don't know what to do with them when they're not hands. So we'll set those aside. Um, he's got his tail here. This is something, so he is a retool of Cutthroat from the Terracons which uh, shares a lot of geometry with uh, Swoop from the uh, Power of the Primes Dinobots. And you can see that especially in the wings and the way that they're hinged. And these legs are straight up cutthroat legs. But what they did was they took the bird legs and they put them on backwards. And then they, they painted the, the heel claw so that I guess that kind of makes it more like the front. And so he, you know, this is, this is how it's intended to be. I'm, I'm struggling with that. Uh, they didn't change the geometry. They, they still look like bird feet because there's one claw in the front and, and two, two bird toes in the back. And Ah, I struggle with that. Uh, you know, it's riveted in there, so removing them and and making them face the other way would be problematic. Now, what you can do, of course, is you can just switch it around and do this. And if you do that, then the legs look like they're facing the right direction, but now you lose all of the detail here. And, you know, this, this looks really great, especially these overlapping knee parts. This does not look so good. So uh, at least for the time being, I'm trying to get to just accept that this is how it's supposed to be and, and be okay with that. Um, but, oh gosh, it's hard. 
it is so hard. Also, you know, the fact that that the tail faces down. So really, they didn't even they didn't even change the assembly. They changed the transform because if you remember Cutthroat had his tail on the upside. And so, you know, they yeah, I don't I don't know. Um so that is that is C-Wing. Uh, yeah, we can show his uh, his god Neptune counterpart here. So we've got we've got C-Wing in all of his C-Wingness, and then we've got Terramander, Terramander. And so this is the God Neptune version of the same mold. And, uh, you know, again, exactly the same, just different colors. I will say that, uh, that it is a lot easier to see the details with the blue rather than the white. Uh, the white and gold is pretty epic. A and, you know, I especially like the silver highlights here. But, uh, but boy, it's really nice to see it in more Gen 1 colors. He looks great. He just looks great. And so while I'm not unhappy to have God Neptune, I'm really happy to have Seawing, a.k.a. Kraken, Seacon, Kraken, whatever. So... <laughs> And you know, I, I hear that Kraken is 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 also a thing. You know, so somebody's come up with that word too. So how how is that better than Nautilator? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. But uh, so there is uh, there is the God Neptune version Terramander. Uh, we're also gonna pull out the Gen One version that is named Sea Wing, very definitively Sea Wing, and he does have the tail that goes down. Uh, now his feet, uh, they, they do have a single point in the front and then a robot fist in the back. So I'm not sure that that's better, but you, you do have C-Wing. I, I always liked C-Wing, uh, mostly for this mode. This is, this is where C-Wing is in his best mode. Unless of course he's, uh, he's combined with the other C-Cons as Piranicon, uh, but in in his combined mode he's he's hard to make a good combiner limb uh the you know the the fins stick out in leg mode they stick out in arm mode it, it's hard to make them look really really cool so i would say that his creature mode is his best mode and then we we have the the modern version which looks great and you can take just to show you you can also take these things you can put them on the tail and that's really cool you know you can swing it forward for an attack mode oh, there we get that in there it doesn't want to go in it doesn't want to stay in for some reason there we go uh, so you can swing it forward in attack mode, or if you if you uh, swivel the waist, then it can go over top of him and and do that. So uh, so that's an option. One thing that I've been doing to to better integrate the extra pieces. So we we could also put these there. If I can get it in there there we go okay so we got that and then we've got that put those up there and then I'll swing this forward and then combine his uh, his weapons here like that and then plug them into the into the back to give him a spiky tail and uh, and I've been doing that uh, a lot lately because it gives you weapon storage for this piece which it's hard to integrate this anywhere else and have it look good uh, if it 
you know, if it had a five millimeter post here rather than a hole, then you could maybe put it right on the head here. And it's like, oh, okay, so it's like a shark fin. That's cool, but it doesn't. So you have to figure out a way to integrate it. And, uh, and that is one that, that I've been using a lot lately. And I think he looks really good that way. Um, he's kind of awesome. I mean, like super badass. If I saw this coming at me in the water, I, I would swim the other way before getting sliced into ribbons and eaten by a shark. So that is, that is sea wing, sea wing, AKA Seacon Kraken from Hasbro Selects. Let's go ahead and show his robot mode because he does have one. And we'll move Gen 1 Sea Wing out of the way. So his transform is, uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, you would normally fold the tail up, which I already had his tail folded up. You can get the wings out of the way. It makes things just a little, little bit easier, uh, keeps things from interfering. And then there's this double joint here, which you're just going to snap that in to lock the knee into place and do the same on that side. And then with the legs, you just kind of position the legs so that this can be a heel. Uh, you can do one of these things and then put it in a different position. And that kind of is a little bit more compact, but the legs don't really transform. You just find your favorite way to get them out of the way. And, uh, and that's good enough, but you know, they're not, they're not super sticky outy. And so they don't really add a, uh, a whole lot of kibble to the design. We're going to rotate at the waist. And then we take the arms are up against the head here. So you pull the arms down, and at this point we can pull the wings out of the way, and you can bend them. So, so now we take the arms, and then we rotate, and then there are fists in here. There we go. We open the fists. He's got little arms, little skinny arms. There we go. And now the whole head goes like this. And there is, so there are these little hinged panels here with the midsection of the creature head. There we go. And so once you open those, that allows this whole thing to open and it reveals the robot head, which goes up on the shoulders. And now we can close these again. And there you have Seawing in his robot mode or Seacon Kraken, whatever you want to call him. To me, he's Seawing. And then you can give him his bat lift thing and his gun thing and. And he's like, Grr. so you take a look and of course the sculpting on on this figure is just excellent. He, he okay, stop sh stop pointing your gun at everybody. That, that's rude. So there, there we go. So the uh, the head sculpt is really nicely done, and I especially like the the dark accents around the visor. His face is really, really well defined and he looks great. And you look at all the details in the mold, all of the intricate little uh, undulations and and the the scoring and everything that they've put into the surface. He's he looks fantastic. And it's, you know, the the Gen 1 version, I, I it's it's almost not even worth showing because here let's 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 bring him over because we have him and and we're going to show him so we fold the wings back and we've got the head things that 
flip down and then spin. So that is that is original sea wing. And I mean honestly, there is just no comparison. There is just no comparison. Yeah, I, I want to pull the legs down further, but they just don't go any further. That's it. And oh, by the way, here's here here's what he looks like from the side. So, um, yeah, and and we'll just set that aside now. <laughs> hey, I love the Gen One Transformers, and I love my Gen One Seacons. But let's be honest, this is in every way superior just in every conceivable way he of course is very well articulated he's got shoulder joints he's got bicep swivels he's got elbow joints because of the transform he's got a bending wrist he's got a pivoting waist he's got hips that move out and up and down he's got swivels in his thighs and he has knee joints so you can really put him into whatever position that you want for his situation and he looks great he just looks awesome and uh and that's something that yeah i've heard people say oh yeah the new toys just aren't as good as the old ones and i can't help but think what in god's name are you thinking uh, this this is just a phenomenal step forward and honestly isn't this what we imagined when we were kids like we had we had this but what was going on in our heads was this you know we we didn't see it as this we saw this and that's what hasbro has been delivering for quite a few years now they've been finally delivering on the promise that they made to us when we were kids and giving us the toys that we wanted when we bought the toys when we were kids or when our parents bought us the toys i bought most of my transformers i had a paper route i you know i spent my money on transformers toys i sure didn't spend it on clothes <laughs> so uh so yeah um this is what we wanted and we're finally getting it so Thank you, Hasbro. Thank you for finally getting, giving us what we were looking for. And, you know, I feel like uh, there's another thank you that should go out. Because for years now, we have been seeing a lot of third-party toy makers and designers creating their own versions of toys that are inspired by the Gen 1 counterparts. And many 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 of those third party designs are absolutely beautiful just amazing and they're pricey you know a, a toy of this size for some of those things will run about between 70 to 90 dollars for for one figure and uh, and so as if i had the budget for it then I would absolutely be hoarding those things. But I think that Hasbro saw that happening and realized that there is this tremendous market for people just like me that, that want this. And so now they're finally delivering that. And I, I think that it's great. And, and I think that, that uh, we have a lot to, you know, a lot of thank yous to give to those third-party entrepreneurs who were, you know, taking a big risk and doing a tremendous amount of work in a in a niche market. So, that being said, Transformers Generation Selects 
Seacon Kraken, aka Seawing, and Transformer Generation Selects Seacon's Lobclaw, aka Nautilus. Aside from the names, huge, huge, huge recommend. I am so happy. You know, it's funny because I was talking to Monica about how, you know, we, we might want to think about, like, scaling back on some of these pre-orders and things because we're just spending too much money on them. And then I got those and I was like, you know what, dear, never mind. Never mind. That That's good. <laughs> oh, I'm so bad. I am so bad. But, uh, you know, I, I, I love my toys and I can't wait to get the rest. So... That's it. Uh, if you like this video, then please click the thumbs up. Uh, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, click the notification bell. That way you know when we post stuff. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, keep your eyes on this channel for other awesome toys. Or, you know, sometimes we review ones that aren't awesome. And we let you know when they suck. This is Clay. Thank you. Keep it retro. But. That's, that's what I say. It's a thing. I'm making it a thing. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>